Hey, yo, Ebony. They might get mad at you for this one, my mom. They can see you with Ebony, Ebony. We gon' talk about everything, everything. Come get these lies. Let me shake them all out. Fill up your glass. Keep it with glass. Sorry, my kid came to steal a soda out of my refrigerator. All right, so welcome. <laughs> welcome to the shenanigans. I am so sorry I'm late. I had no idea that the Ready to Love panel was going to run that long and that so many of the men from Ready to Love seasons present and past were going to show up and add their two cents to everything that's been happening and what's going on. So, uh... <laughs> We are gathered here. Yes, Diddy. Listen, my friend Demi is a brilliant author, scholar, worldly man of means. And he is here to... <laughs> this is probably going to hurt his brain and his feelings, y'all, because this is a lot. So we're here today to read the book. From Chasing Dallas season, okay, Chasing Dallas season five just started Thursday evening. And in the first episode, there was a soft launch of a book by one of the members of the cast, Tedley. Tedley, my love, had, listen, it's just. Let me borrow your folks. You just pause it. Mute yourself for a second. Okay, hold on. My daughter's goofy. Okay. The people say book is a strong word. Listen. Book pamphlet. It has a cover and a back and, and it has words in the middle. So we're calling it a book. And so I was able to read chapter three on our library and review yesterday with Loretta and El Teddy. So I decided in my infinite wisdom that it would be appropriate for us to read the book together. So that's what, <laughs> that's what we're going to do today. Now, let me find my Kindle app. Can y'all see it? Okay, let me get to the front of the book. Okay, this is, shit, it's too bright. Hold on. I know I need the brightness to be able to to see what's happening. So this is the book. It's called Perseverance of Tedley. I did it, comma, still doing it, comma, and will master it, exclamation point. And it says the author is Tedley Phillips, the second, the third, the third. Yes, this will be a dramatic reading. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chapters of this particular autobiography. He's young, so he ain't did much in, he ain't, he hasn't done, he doesn't have a, an expanse of like 60 years to pull from. So the book is smaller, which makes sense. It makes sense. 
Okay, we're not going to start with the grammaticals. Okay, so we're going to start chapter one. Who is Tedley? Question mark. <laughs> Y'all are best already. Listen, listen, this is, this is, hold on. That's what the font looks like. This is what it's looking like, okay? How many pages? I don't know. It's 10 chapters. And because it's on Kindle, it doesn't say how many pages it is. It just says, it, it'll give you like how much time to the end of the chapter, depending on how fast you're reading and swiping the pages. And when I do it, it says like it's one minute to the end of the chapter. So clearly it ain't a whole bunch in said chapters, but we're going to get started. If it's that small, he shouldn't have been charged thirty dollars a book. Listen, shout out to me having Kindle Unlimited, um, because I got it for free. I was able to download this for free because I have Kindle Unlimited because I read so much. I have like fifteen hundred books on my Kindle currently, so because I read a lot, 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 lot. So we gon' <laughs> we're gonna do we're <laughs> y'all. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let me turn the brightness up. I know you can't see it. I got contacts in today. Deadly Phillips the third, comma. And I'm going to, and this is how we're going to read this whole thing. Every um, punctuation will be mentioned. Every end of sentence. Oh, paragraph stops. Paragraph starts. Like I was reading yesterday. That's how dramatic we're going to be with this reading. Okay, chapter one, who is Tedley? Question mark. Beginning of the chapter. Tedley Phillips III, comma, named after his father and grandfather, comma, graced the world with his life on December 14, 1989, comma, in Houston, Texas, period, in the sentence. Tedley is the middle child to Tedley Phillips Jr. and Yolanda Phillips, along with two siblings slash brothers. You could have just said sib one or the other. They're interchangeable, the music. Okay. In parentheses, Brian and Jared, period. Tedley and Yolanda were two hardworking, comma, professional, comma, inspiring, comma, and admirable figures in their son's lives, period. End of paragraph. Ted Lee's mother spent ye several years as a corporate banking professional and his father was a tech geek in the IT field, period. Ted Lee was raised and spent his childhood in the suburbs of Houston, parentheses, Sugarland slash Missouri City area, period, end of paragraph. A kid growing up, Tedley embodied so much charisma, comma, spunk, comma, and individuality, period. His parents knew at an early age he was the unicorn amongst their two other sons, period. He was the unicorn. <laughs> he was the unicorn. <laughs> he was the unicorn, y'all. Okay, his brothers were duds, and he was the sparkling diamond of water, according to this. Uh, while his two brothers enjoyed recreational activities, rather it was with the kids in the neighborhood shooting basketball hoops and throwing a football around till the streetlights came on or being a part of a local athletic league on the weekends, period, Tedley preferred other things as extracurricular activities such as photography, comma, theater slash acting, comma, fashion, comma, and various things that embellish a glittered and polished image, period, end of paragraph. Tedley formed an inseparable bond with his mother growing up, comma, he became a true mama's boy, in quotation marks, there were remarkable moments that sparked the bond between his mother and himself, period. Hey, Miss Faith thing. Uh, hey, welcome to my shenanigans. <laughs> okay, remarkable 
one which had sparked the bond between his mother and himself, period. Rather, it was memorable moments when he'd, H-E apostrophe D, be in the kitchen with her, comma, as she would sit him on the kitchen countertop and watch her prepare family favorite meals and cook other dishes, period. Yolanda absorbed and adored the admiration she noticed her son had for her, period. In fact, comma, she began to teach him many treasurable things at an early age, period. I like that yeah, this feels premature from what I hear. It's a memoir of his four days and his twelve. Well, we gonna see. We gonna see. Yolanda shared special knowledgeable things with him, comma, that she knew would be would benefit him in his future as he would one day enter into adulthood, period. She'd verbally mention real life scenarios to him, like in quotation marks, if someone if something ever happens to mama, comma, this is what you are going to do and should do, end of quotation. And other comments like quotation marks again, this is the code to this, and that's how you take care of this, end of quotations, and those very precious moments. Tedley would tear up and hug on his mother, wishing that in a perfect world nothing would ever happen to her as if she could exist on earth forever. Period. End of paragraph. <laughs> oh, Teddy. For the way folks talk. Okay. But also, uh, if this is autobiography, he should have written this from first person and not third person perspective. Hold on, wait on it. Because it's just, the, as far as I know, from me skimming, it's just the first chapter in third person. And it switches to first person in chapter two. We gonna get there. Okay. Although Tedley shared a very special bond with his mother, comma, he had an influential relationship with his father, too. Period. End of paragraph. It was one sentence long. I don't. That feels like that. Oh. Tedley loved to dress up as a kid, comma. He'd run to his father's side of the closet and pull out all of his electric silk looking ties. Period. It was the early 90s, so the styles, comma, colors, comma, and patterns astonished Tedley's visuals and sharpened his taste for fashion. Tedley's father taught him how to tie his first tie one morning for church service. Period. End of paragraph. Tedley's father was very hands-on with all three of his sons, comma, but when it came to Tedley, he knew Tedley yearned for a special type of attention from both of his parents. Period. Sounds like he was spoiled. Tedley's um, father accepted individuality within each of his sons, period. Brian, comma, Tedley, comma, and Jared were all so different from each other, period. Brian was laid back, comma, non-confrontational, comma, and mellow, period. Tedley was blunt, comma, outspoken, comma, free-spirited, and passionate about anything he believed in. Period. Jared was mischievous, comma, shy, comma, with a tough exterior, but yet the most sensitive. Period. End of sentence. <laughs> end, of, end of paragraph, excuse me. The Phillips family had so many great moments together, comma. One of Teddy's favorite and precious memories with his family as a kid was their annual summer trips to Disney World. Period. The ritual always remained constant. Before catching their flight. Oh, I, what is this punctuation mark? Where is the, the dot and the comma? The, uh, shit. I can see the word in front of my face. Uh, what happened? Why you sound like you're reading from a children's book? A semicolon. Thank you, because I can see it in my head, but I just didn't, thank you. It was a semicolon. Holy Jesus, where was I? I was at the semicolon. Hold on. Okay. The ritual always remained constant semicolon before catching their flight to Orlando. The family would dine out to their favorite seafood restaurant, Papa Do's, in parentheses, and then immediately catch their flight to Orlando, period. During every trip, his parents filmed every moment on their handheld Sony video recorder, semicolon. 
It was literally something like the black version of keeping up with the Kardashians in the 90s, exclamation point. Like keeping up with the Kardashians and okay. In the stop oh, new paragraph. <laughs> In the summer of 2000, Ted Lee's father purchased a family first pet, comma, a toy poodle named Titan, period. The territorial and loyal poodle, comma, Titan stole the family's hearts right away, period. Ted Lee shared a very special bond with Titan, comma. Ted Lee spent more time inside the house than his brothers did as they were always outside playing sports, period. Ted Lee's mother considered Titan as a fourth son, comma. She would cook special dishes, comma, take him to the salon for grooming, comma, buy him clothes, comma, treats, comma, and toys, period. End of paragraph. So we can see these characters as as Where is the colorful language? Because I just heard a lot of about his parents who feel like I still know nothing. This is written like a newspaper article. Well, we, we ain't got there yet. Hold on. Hold on. It says it's one minute left in this third person chapter. One morning, shortly after Ted Lee, comma, Brian, comma, and Jared, this is a new paragraph, I'm sorry, uh, and Jared left for school, comma, Yolanda took Titan outside for a walk as she normally would, period. Titan did not like wearing a leash and was actually well behaved without wearing one on him, period. I this don't turn out bad. On, his partic on this particular morning, as Titan leaped in front of Yolanda, comma, a local school bus was driving on the street toward the family home, period. Jesus Christ. Titan began to run toward the school bus as it was driving near the direction of the two of them, period. Titan began to run abruptly in front of the bus, comma, within a split second, Titan was hit by the bus. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. No, oh, sir. Poor Titan. Titan was hit by the bus, comma. The driver slammed on their brakes, comma, striking the back end of Titan, period. In complete shock, comma, Yolanda ran to Titan and picked him up immediately in shock, period. End of paragraph. At this point, Titan was severely injured and was not able to physically move, period. That is just one sentence in between the two paragraphs. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that? And did the new paragraph starts? I don't know. No, it doesn't have color of it. <laughs> right, Diddy. Uh, Yolanda rushed Titan to new paragraph. I'm sorry. Yolanda rushed Titan to the nearest neighborhood animal hospital. Once she arrived, the veterinarian took an X-ray of Titan's body. Period. It was determined that his pelvis, bone, and surrounding muscle slash tissue was completely damaged, comma, and he was beginning to have internal bleeding. The period. The veterinarian regretfully informed Yolanda there would be nothing that they could possibly do to save him from the injury, comma leaving him in traumatic pain and continuous bleeding, which would have led to his organs failing eventually, period. Yolanda was faced with the hard decision to put Titan to sleep, comma. At the time, Yolanda was saddened by the unfortunate decision she was forced to make, period. End of paragraph. Later that evening, as the boys got home from school, comma, they noticed Titan was nowhere to be found at the home, period. Yolanda informed them of the tragic event that occurred with Titan earlier that morning. All three sons were heartbroken by the news, comma. Jared took the news the hardest, period. As time went on, comma, Yolanda felt a huge amount of guilt for Titan's passing, period. Tedley's father tried his hardest to keep the passing of Titan off of their son's minds, comma. He often took them out each weekend, Comma, riding in his red T-top Firebird car, comma, WWE wrestling matches, comma, movies, comma, go-karting, comma, and Astral World. Period. End of paragraph. When Tedley's parents spent date night out, comma, him and his brothers 
would stay up late until their parents arrived back home, comma, watching some of his favorite things on TV, semicolon, show time, like show, okay, on TV, like semicolon, Showtime at the Apollo, comma, Mad TV, comma, three ninja movies, comma, and the England comedy, in the England, the, okay, he meant English, but the, it says the England comedian being, he meant English. End of chapter. That's the end of that chapter. Okay. Chapter two. <laughs> Fix it. My God. Uh, chapter two is called King. Yeah, that was the end of the chapter. It's, I don't know. It ends weirdly. By the age of 12, I had a growing fascination for crowns. Comma. Things that sparkle, comma, and anything that was dreamy to the eye, period. I remember being such a Harry Potter fan, comma. I pretty much had a Harry Potter museum in my bedroom, exclamation point. I always felt magical as a kid in so many ways, comma. I had such a strong level of confidence and aura about myself, period. Around this particular age of my preteen years, comma, some of my favorite music artists were Prince, comma, Mariah Carey, comma, and Madonna, period. I adored those artists so much, and they all represented individuality, comma, fashion, comma, and fabulosity, period. When it came to my own favorite television shows, semicolon, hands down, they were Ricky Lake, comma, Noah's Ark, comma, Full House, comma, and the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, period. End of paragraph. So is Titan's life getting cut short while he holds on? All right. Take your word. Oh my God. Y'all are living there. Okay, so that was the end of that paragraph. And you'll have noticed with the new chapter, he is now speaking in first person and not third person. After finishing elementary school and entry into middle school, comma, I accepted the fact that I was a very unique and different. I was very unique and different, comma, especially when it came to my sexuality and attraction to the same sex. Period. While attending middle school, I witnessed a lot of bullying. Period. I saw individuals who looked like me getting bullied daily. Period. I attended Lake Olympia Middle School in Missouri City, Texas, comma, where predominantly the demographics were about 75% white, comma, 20% black, comma, and probably about 5% of other ethnicities. Period. Believe it or not, comma, I never was bullied during my years in middle school. Period. In the paragraph. I guess I was somewhat popular, comma. I was always included and invited to everything by everyone, period. I was a theater kid, but yet had a variety of friends who were athletes slash jocks, comma, stoners, comma, geeks, comma, loners, comma, and cool kids. No, there's no end. Loners, comma, cool kids, and etc. period. End of paragraph. <laughs> Every day after school, I would rush home to get on AOL dial-up messenger, comma. My screen name was Bill, parentheses, Billion Dollar King. My friends and I would gossip about the highlights of our day at school, period. On my 13th birthday, comma, my parents brought me my first cell phone, a silver Motorola V-Series V120E, period. I was so excited to have my own phone, comma, at 13. It definitely was not common to have a cell phone at that age, exclamation point. Back in 2002, iPhones did not even exist, exclamation point, end of paragraph. Oh, God. So, mama and daddy would always give me, give, uh, hold on. 
<laughs> oh, this is a new paragraph. Mama and Daddy would always give my brothers and I weekly allowances, comma, probably about a hundred dollars each. Period. I would also save my always save my allowance money for weekend fun and outings. Period. My group of friends and I would hang out at the mall and watch movies at the theater, comma, in First Colony Shopping Center in Sugarland, Texas. Period. Some of my favorite stores to shop in the mall were Gadzooks, comma, Mervich, comma, Spencer's, and Express, period, and a uh, paragraph. So clearly his parents was rich because my allowance was the fact that I could eat for free and I had a roof and, and lights. Listen, he, I said he was spoiled. He never said he was, well, I don't know why I was missing. A hundred dollars, yeah, three hundred dollars for your children. So a hundred dollars for each brother. But he said his daddy was in tech and his mama was in the financial district. So they probably had they had the money. They had the money. My father was an architect, and my mama worked for the Avon Call Center while she was in school to become a social worker. So what no lie. Plus, my father was a pastor, and my mama was the first lady. Well, no. Child. Okay. Um, that was the end. Express was the end of the paragraph. New paragraph. By the time I completed the eighth grade, comma, I began preparing for my freshman year in high school, period. I witnessed my parents go through an unexpected divorce. Oh, that's unfortunate, period. I was uncertain as to why two married parents who always demonstrated love and support for one another would get a divorce because they was arguing at night while you and your brothers were asleep so y'all wouldn't see them fighting about the fact that your daddy wouldn't come home on time. And sister uh, Shirley keeps calling her motherfucking phone, the house phone, looking for your dad. Hey, talk about it. All right. As the divorce became final, comma, my older brother Brian was preparing for college and moved out on his own, period. I began to worry as to what would happen with the dynamic and relationship of our family. End of paragraph. A couple of months after our parents told us their divorce was final, comma, we were informed by our father that he was moving out, period. As time went on, comma, I started to notice my father becoming a bit more distant with us, period. A year later, comma, my mama decided to sell our beautiful childhood home, period. Ever since I was a kid, comma, I have always admired my mother's strength and ability to make decisions on her own, period. I'm going to read that part again. I have always admired my mother's strength and ability to make decisions on her own, period. Okay, I mean, we're going we gonna to circle back to that, that sentence. One day, our mother took, <laughs> one day our mother took us with her to the local car wash to get her 20, 2002 Volvo's S60 detail. After the car wash, we went and got ice cream, comma. Then she took us riding in a very nice, comma, gated community with gorgeous houses, period. As my mom was driving, comma, she made a sudden stop. Pulled in front of this colonial style, comma, big red brick two-story home, comma, with two palm trees in the front of it, period. The house looked like it was in California or something, period. End of paragraph. My little brother Jared and I looked at each other confused, comma, and before we could even ask or say anything, comma, my mama said, in quotations, this is our new house, y'all, exclamation point. Apparently. My mother had already purchased a home in the midst of selling our old home, period. End of paragraph. Manifest him into being engaged ever to... Oh, shit. Not during Black Women's History Month. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> the new home was breath... This new paragraph. Sorry, y'all. The new home was breathtaking, comma. We got out of the car and my mom opened the front door of the home, period. This house had a huge entryway, comma, formal dining room, comma, with a crystal chandelier and a pool in the backyard. Oh, not a pool in the backyard, Jesus. Um, exclamation point. Our mother told us we would be moving in within a month, comma. This was a shock to Jared and me, period. 
Although I was excited about the new house, comma, I was still concerned about the relationship with my father becoming a little bit distant, period. Even though he and my mother were divorced, comma, at times I felt like he divorced my brothers and I too. It feels that way sometimes, yes. We rarely talked to our father or spent time together as time went on, period. I always had certain special moments with my dad, period. Moving day arrived sooner than expected and it was time to relocate to our new house, comma. The more the move occurred right before the new school year began, period. Don't she though? End of paragraph. During my mid-teen years, comma, my fascination with photography and making pictures became a big thing in my life, period. One day on a shopping trip to Circuit City with my mom, comma, I begged her for a vintage Polaroid camera I saw at the store, period. Mom gave in and purchased the camera for me, exclamation point. I was so excited about my new camera, comma, at one point after taking so many pictures, comma, I ran out of instant paper film, period. My mom and I went to the neighborhood Walgreens to purchase more film paper. Right. Because you had to have money to go to Circuit City. Once we got new, that was the end of the paragraph. New paragraph. Once we got to Walgreens, comma, my mama decided to stay in the car as I ran into the store, period. While I was in line waiting at the photo station located in the back of the store, comma, I noticed a tall woman dressed in all black with cornrow braids, comma, baseball hat, and, comma, and sunglasses on, period. The woman to appear to be incognito, period. I overheard the cashier ask for the woman's name. I heard the lady with her, in quotation marks, Solange Knowles. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to pause at Solange. Initially thought I had mistakenly overheard a different name. Comma. I was trying to figure out if that was a comma or the period. Um, but she repeated it again to the cashier and said to and I said to myself, Solange and then Beyonce's sister? Exclamation point question mark. I caught a glimpse of her. And she turned around and walked off. After I saw her distinct facial features comma, I knew it was really her, exclamation point. I became a bit starstruck at that time, period. I was such a fan of Solange and Destiny's Child, exclamation point, and a paragraph. You're not going to commit libel against the <laughs> He saw Solange at the, at the Walgreens. Amen. New paragraph. <laughs> as soon as I got back to the car with my mom, comma, I explained to her who I saw, and she said, I saw, in quotation marks, I saw a lady in all black walk out of the store and jumped into a black suburban. I was wondering who that was, in the quotations. We eventually drove off and headed back home, in the paragraph. Once we pulled into the entrance of our subdivision, comma, about two cars ahead, I noticed the same black suburban that my mom allegedly saw Solange get into at the Walgreens parking lot entering our subdivision, period. A few days after, comma, I was watching MTV Cribs and Destiny's Child Home was featured on an episode, period. As I was watching the show, the group disclosed the name of their neighborhood, comma, and it was the same neighborhood that we were living in, Exclamation point. I knew from watching that that one episode, comma, my sighting of Solange today at Walgreens was accurate, period. It was a pretty exciting to know that we lived in the same area as well-known celebrities such as Destiny's Child, exclamation point, in the paragraph. We know Ray J goes to Walgreens to get new underwear, according to Prince. He gets it from Walgreens? He gets his underwear from Walgreens? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a lot. 
Okay. Uh, new paragraph. It was finally time for high school. Comma. I began my freshman year at Elkins High School. Period. Elkins was a school where many famous athletes' kids attended and rappers such as Travis Scott. Period. During my I'm sorry. He said celebrities and then said Travis Scott and then didn't say nobody else. During my freshman year, I met my best friend Megan, comma. We went met in biology class. Period. Megan was blunt, pretty funny, and fashion forward. Period. All the guys wanted to date Megan. Semicolon. She was that girl. Exclamation point. Megan and I were two peas in a pot. In a pot. P-O-T. Two peas. In a pot. Two peas in a pot, y'all. In a pot. Not a pod. Is the accurate saying two peas in a pod. But two peas in a pot. If he says that this Megan ends up being Megan the Stallion, I um uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <sighs> Megan and I were two peas in a pot, comma. Since day one of our freshman year, period. And uh Paragraph. Did he name the gated community he moved into if he said he was BFF with Miss Good? I, no, he does. If there is no name of the community. It would if you have Kindle Unlimited, Denny, like I do. The book was free. I didn't pay for the book. I don't know, little baby. I, maybe you left two peas in the pot. But I don't know about just putting two peas in a pot. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because that was the end of the program. And I don't know if Megan's going to come back around. <laughs> I refund on zero dollars. My high school year flew back. I started working my very first job during my sophomore year at a local private pharmacy doing administrative duties, period. My mom gave me her car as my first car, comma, shortly after she bought herself a new one, period. I began to learn the responsibilities of having somewhat independent and of being somewhat independent and saving money. Staying at your parents' house and driving their car does not mean that you are independent. At an early age, my mom taught me the value of a dollar, period, in the paragraph. May 31st, 2008, it was graduation day, comma. Prior to this day, all of my friends and I had different dreams, comma, plans, and ambitions after high school, period. Graduation day was bittersweet, comma. This was a moment that some of the friends I met throughout the four years at Elkins, comma, I will possibly never see again, comma, or barely talk to anymore, period. I always knew I wanted a career in business, period. In 2009, I attended the University of Houston and majored in business management, period. End of paragraph. End of chapter. End of paragraph and end of chapter. Y'all heard me. Because he jumped from I got a job and I was driving my mama's car and I was feeling independent. <laughs> To the next sentence is it's graduation day and it's all over. <laughs> I went from I was in my freshman year and Megan was my best friend and I saw Solange at the Walgreens to and we're just on. He should have used that Solange story as chapter one. Should have woulda coulda. Okay, y'all, hold on one second. Y'all, I need to clock out of my job because I have been working this whole time. Oh, I Let me clock out right quick and then we're going to move on to chapter three of the incredible story of Tedley. Chapter 3 is called Signs of Hope. 
and and yeah. This is the chapter that I read to El Teddy and Loretta yesterday. And we just oh I had to do so much to get to the app to clock in and out. It's ridiculous. Let me clock out because I'm I'm not doing no more work work today. We gonna finish this. <laughs> we gonna finish this. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. The baby girl said she was leaving. And the peer on on my team so nobody can answer the dumbass questions like I'm still at work. And let's get rid of this. Um, you can leave. Okay. Sasalon, so, so he should. Okay. Sign the post. Here we go. We we back in. Since early 2010, I was seriously involved in a toxic on and off relationship with a lover by the name of Craig. Comma. We were head over heels for each other. Exclamation point. Craig was my first serious lover in relationship during my adulthood, period. We butted heads countless times, semicolon. I mean, we were like night and day, period. In 2013, we moved into our first place together, comma, a condo in a prime location of the Houston Medical Center, period. When things were good, they were good. And when things were bad, they were big bad, exclamation point. Craig had such a... Did, did I say... This is a new paragraph. Wait, listen. Hey, I don't know, El Teddy. I don't know. We just jumped to Craig. I don't know. I don't know. Craig was such a dominating and narcissist type of personality, period. It should say narcissistic, but we, we, we went over that yesterday. I think at age 23... I learned pretty quickly what true love actually felt like, period. Craig and I were so inseparable, comma. He was heavily into church, comma, the gospel music. <laughs> that tickles me. Why is it the gospel music? Okay. And, comma, and he oddly had a passion for working with the dead in the funeral industry. Exclamation point, end of paragraph. Typically, comma, our schedules and lives were opposite, period. Over time, I became so overwhelmed, period. The emotional roller coaster Craig and I were going through became overbearing, comma. I decided to break up with Greg. Who is Greg? Who? You decided to break up? We've been talking about Craig this whole time. Who is Greg and why are you breaking up with him? I just... Comma, after having a few issues with each other, period. As time went on, comma, we back to Craig. Craig and I would communicate frequently and even spend time together, period. In my mind, my intentions were to remain friends with Craig, comma, but eventually the emotions between him and I made us closer again, exclamation point. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. Despite the feelings that began to blossom between us, I promised myself I would stay focused and not let anything or anyone distract me. Period. End of paragraph. In 2015 slash 2016, I was truly in my prime time. Period. I began my first career in corporate America. Period. I became the director of marketing for a big firm, comma, working with the TV broadcasting affiliate, KHOU. Period. I was responsible for all the front end marketing and communication, period. I really love working behind the scenes and helping coordinate segments for the network, period. I then grew a great working relationship with a well-known journalist and host of Great Day Houston, comma, Deborah Duncan, period. End of paragraph. I guess. I don't know who Greg is, but he showed me. Uh, he broke up with Greg, so I guess it don't matter. I don't know what happened to Craig. He and Craig, I guess, were still talking. 
During the week, new paragraph. During the weekdays, the late evenings and weekends, comma, I work part time as a new home consultant with Builder Toll Brothers. Period. I began to have a niche for real estate and operational aesthetics of newly built construction homes. Period. End of paragraph. In 2017, comma, cursed this morning, I was awoken by an intense facial soreness and pain on the left side of my face. Period. As I got out of bed, comma, I ran to the restroom holding my face and looked at myself in the mirror, period. Once I saw the reflection of myself in the mirror, comma, I could barely recognize myself, period. My face appeared to be lopsided and definitely wasn't the face I was familiar with, period. At this point, I had thought that maybe this baby had had a stroke. Keep listening. The first new paragraph, the first thought had was comma i possibly could have had a mild stroke while asleep or something period i started questioning the likelihood and possibility of having a stroke at age 27 exclamation point i called my mother and told her what was going on with my face comma i remember hearing the concern in her voice period the first thing she told me to do was go to the emergency room immediately comma so i did just that period yeah that would have been my advice as a mama too to go to the emergency room immediately and I'll meet you there. Sitting in the emergency room on Christmas morning was definitely not how I planned on spending my Christmas day, period. Once I arrived at the hospital, the doctors ran several tests on me, period. Luckily, comma, I did not have a stroke. Amen? Amen? Okay, exclamation point. Tests were concluded and the doctor informed me that I had experienced a case of Bell's palsy, period. At the time, I had no idea what the hell Bell's palsy was, period. The doctor fully explained to me that the, the condition was a temporary diagnosis, period. New paragraph. The diagnosis is a neurological disorder that causes paralysis or weakness on one side of the face, period. In fact, comma, it was determined that one of the nerves which controlled my facial muscles became severely damaged, period. End of paragraph. I was very confused as to how this happened to me, comma. I mean, I've always been healthy and never had anything major affect my health, exclamation point. My biggest concern was the physical condition of my face and would I ever look normal again, exclamation point. I was told I possibly became sick with Bell palsy due to stress, lack, and lack of rest. Chapter three, yes, we're back to chapter three. Um, I would just like to say I understand you know, you could all you always been healthy, and then for something to come out of the blue and strike you is is difficult. However, my mother always says, "In your wellest moment, you are sick enough to die," and that is very true. So treat the people around you good. Amen. All right. My doctor prescribed me steroid. This new paragraph. I'm sorry. <laughs> My doctor prescribed me steroid pills and gave me a mini massage electric device for my face, period. I was told it would take up to six weeks for my face to fully recover from the condition, period. End of paragraph. I ended up spending over two hours in the emergency room, period. I felt like my Christmas was pretty much ruined, exclamation point. All I can think about is how ugly I looked and what do I tell my friends and family, comma, as to why my face looked the way it did, period. You tell them the truth. And if they not, if they ain't, if they're not ain't shit people, they, it, they, it, it's not going to matter. Okay. I always knew that it without a doubt, I could share the truth with my mother, comma, and she wouldn't have any judgment, period. Why would somebody judge you for being struck down with Bell's palm? Or have, it, or if it was a stroke, having a stroke. Okay. I just, I just, that, I just, I just didn't understand. Okay. Later on in the evening, in the paragraph, new paragraph, later on, comma, in the evening after gathering myself mentally, comma, Christmas Day festivities went on as they normally would every year with my family, period. Once I got to my mother's house, comma, I shared with my family what occurred and explained the condition I began to experience, period. I was showered with so much love and support from my family, comma. I was somewhat relieved and ended up enjoying the holiday, period. Chapter four, comfortable versus uncomfortable. Here we go. 
On the weekends, I enjoyed hanging out with my older friends, period. Ryan and Lisa were about 11 years older than me, period. Ryan was like my older gay big brother from another mother, period. Ryan was a well-known hairstylist to many elite celebrities and TV personalities in Houston, period. Ryan was always so much fun, comma, wore the best fashions, comma, and was a complete social butterfly in the Houston scene, period. Lisa was Ryan's best friend. Comma. She was fabulous, comma, gorgeous, comma, a stay-at-home mom, comma, and trophy wife to her husband. Period. In the paragraph. That's sad. Like, it would never even occur to me that my family would shame me for being sick. It did that just doesn't enter. I don't know. People are weird. Our typical hangout spots were Davenport Martini Lounge, comma, Swagger's Bar, comma, Bartini's, comma, and McCormick and Schmick's, period. Okay, can we just stop and give McCormick and Schmick's their flowers because their food is always, every time I go there, whenever I go to McCormick and Schmick's, the food is always, it's always good. I learned so much from hanging around Ryan, comma. He would always introduce me to many black influencers influential socialites in the city period anytime i stepped out with ryan comma i felt like a local celebrity period everything always seemed so perfect with ryan's lifestyle comma but i have fond memories of when it came to his let me read this sentence again everything always seems so perfect with ryan's lifestyle comma but i have found Fond memories of when it came to his health, comma, there were times he would get sick a lot. Well, why would you have fond memories of him getting sick? End of paragraph. Okay. Ryan seemed to always have a chronic cough and common cold, period. I didn't think much of Ryan's health being a concern or a threat to his well-being, comma. I thought maybe his age contributed to the condition of his health, comma, considering the fact that he was 40. Yes, El Teddy, we did. We did go to McCormick and Shrix when we couldn't. Was, I think that's because we couldn't get into old lady child. <laughs> his age contributed to his condition of his health, comma, considering the fact that he was 40. He was 40 and had a spike of high blood pressure at times, period. One early morning during my commute to work, I received a frantic phone call from Lisa, comma. She told me that Ryan was rushed to the ER and had fluid in his lungs, comma, which we eventually found out later he had a severe case of pneumonia, period. For at least seven days straight, Ryan was in the hospital and struggled with breathing on his own, period. After a full week, comma, doctors and Ryan's family were faced with making an unfortunate decision of placing him on a breathing ventilator machine, comma, leading to life support, period. Ryan's lungs had become so full of fluid there wasn't much doctors could do, period. End of paragraph. Right, I'm 47. Not El Teddy is 62 and he's birth. Y'all know what? I'm not doing this with y'all. <sighs> New paragraph. Two weeks later, our friend Ryan passed, comma. Lisa and I were devastated along with his family, period. I was beyond grateful for all the things Ryan taught me in this alternative lifestyle, period. Ryan instilled some major values within my personal growth, comma, wisdom, comma, and awareness regarding the vibrant lifestyle that I began to live unapologetically, period. One of my most memorable moments with Ryan was when he taught me when ordering a lemon drop martini, comma, request kettle one vodka, exclamation point, end of paragraph. Oh, wait, Craig is back. New paragraph. Another year had gone by and bringing Craig back into my world seemed impossible after four to five years on and off, period. Oh. I felt as if I couldn't give up the joy I found with Craig, period. Despite so many negative differences between us, I'd always look over them and make countless excuses for his behavior during our relationship, period. As time went on, comma, I found myself distancing myself from Craig drastically. Again? Again? You, okay. 
We barely were communicating and seeing each other at one point, period. Craig was still somewhat in the pic. I'm sorry, this don't make no fucking sense. Craig was still somewhat in the picture, comma. It was like I couldn't escape him, comma, ever. An all caps exclamation point. Craig would call me and send, comma, and send flowers, comma, buy me gifts, and do all the kind gestures to possibly win in quotation marks me back, period. I was truly enjoying the single life and dating, semicolon. I also knew Craig had an idea I was actively dating and was socially out a lot, period. Sometimes I began to feel guilty while casually getting to know an individual, period. Although I had no damn clue what Craig was doing or who he could have been involved with, comma, I couldn't keep a sane and clear conscience regarding the thought of fully moving on, period. End of paragraph. Okay, Craig's still here. On my 28th birthday, comma, I took a trip to one of my favorite cities, comma, New York, period. Every year, it was always my ritual to take a trip somewhere, period. New York is a city that I would constantly visit and not get tired of it, com exclamation point. While I was in New York, comma, Craig was constantly reaching out to me. Craig suddenly told me that we needed to have a moment to sit down and talk once I got back home, period. The short birthday trip to New York concluded and I had finally returned home to Houston, period. Prior to returning back home, comma, Craig sent me a text message with plans to meet, period. The text message included details regarding the location, date, and time, period. End of paragraph. Justice for Craig. December 23rd, 2018, the day had arrived, comma. It was time to meet up with Craig, period. We hadn't seen each other in at least two months, period. Per Craig's instructions, he told me to meet him at 7 p.m. on the rooftop in the clubhouse. Don't meet no nigga on the roof. He probably gonna push you off. Uh, in the rooftop in the clubhouse room of his apartment building, period. As I got off the elevator, I saw Craig from a vivid distance, and he was standing on the balcony. I must admit my nerves were on edge, comma. I didn't know what was about to go down, exclamation point. If Craig jump off this fucking balcony, off this fucking building and commit suicide, I'm going to start screaming. Please understand. Please understand. New paragraph. Once I got close to the Craig, comma, I could smell his cologne, Gucci Guilty, in quotation, in parentheses, in the breeze of the wind. Period. My heart was racing fast, comma. My eyes started to tear up, comma. My stomach was in knots, period. All of a sudden, comma, the song Quickly by John Legend and Brandy started to play, period. Craig and I would always play the song while we were together, period. End of paragraph. Craig and I were finally face to face, comma. We hugged each other, comma, and he told me he missed me along with how much he loved me, period. I began to shed a tear or two, comma. Next thing I know, he gets on one knee. <laughs> Shut the absolute fuck up. The next thing I know, he gets on one knee, comma, and asks if I would spend the rest of my life with him. Three exclamation points. I was appalled. Sorry. My God. Hold on. I was appalled, comma, speechless, comma, and shocked, period. Of course I said yes. Yeah. <laughs> that thing was appalled and you still say yes. You keep kidding me. Ah, Jesus. Oh, God. He said yes after you were a ball Okay. The ring was gorgeous. It was a beautiful bling baguette diamond band. Is that the same band he wears for all? Is it the same ring? 
that caused the drama with the other man from the, that he paid to be on the show to be his boyfriend? Okay. A uh, beautiful bling back at Diamond Band, period. Although I was so thrilled and excited, comma, I still had some anxious comments, indecisive comment, and doubtful thoughts floating in my head about the two of us, period, end of paragraph. Shortly after the proposal, comma, I shared the news with my mother, and Craig did the same with his mom, period. For the most part, both of our mothers seemed happy for both of us, period. I knew in the back of my head the unresolved issues Craig and I had, semicolon, almost seemed unbearable, comma, in my personal opinion, period. Craig had a huge anger problem and was so possessive at times, period. Often he would act out in rage if something did not go his way, period. Maybe a week later, comma, I started to regret my decision with saying yes to Craig, period. I think I might have made an impulsive decision. You think? You motherfucking think? So now, <laughs> now you think you may have made a wrong decision by saying yes to this nigga. Okay. New paragraph. It was approaching the new year, and it was, and as time progressed, comma, I knew for certain I didn't want to spend the rest of my life with Chris. Not that I'm laughing. Yes, I am. Shut up, Ebony. It works between the two of us after the engagement period in the paragraph. One day while we were at, lunch, at brunch, um, comma, Craig got up to go to the bathroom, period. Craig left his phone on the table, semicolon. I had noticed it began to vibrate repeatedly. I glanced over at the screen of his phone, comma, and it appeared to be unlocked, period. My intuition told me to pick it up and open the message. Period. Jolene, 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 Jolene. The messages were from someone with the initial L. Period. I was serious and very curious as to who the hell is this messaging my man back to back. Bitch. It doesn't say that. I just added that. <laughs> I'm going to add some shit for emphasis. Okay. At this point, Craig was still in the bathroom. So I grabbed the phone quickly and opened the message. New paragraph. When I opened the messages, comma, I couldn't believe what I saw, comma. It looked like a whole freak show on this man's phone, exclamation point. No, it's not. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it was a boundary or not, Denny. I don't. I, we. I don't know if they had a discussion about being in each other's phones and stuff like that. So I don't know if that was a boundary that he was specifically crossed. Hold on. I saw several inappropriate photos and words being exchanged with this whore ass person with the contact name L in ex exclamation point. I was completely disgusted and disappointed. Period. Craig finally came back to the table and as he sat back down, comma, I still had his phone in my hand. He frantically asked, comma, what are you doing with my phone? Exclamation point, question mark. I responded, comma, just analyzing the messages and pictures between you, this slut L, and yourself. Craig was livid. <laughs> you think? You think? Okay. Craig was living and getting stuttering. He kept asking, what are you talking about? Nigga, please. Please don't do this. Please, please. The jig is up, my love. The jig is the fuck up. The jig is up. New paragraph. Now, see, comma, typically I don't like confrontation in the public setting, comma, but honey, at this point, Tyrone, in all caps, in uh, parentheses, my alter ego, got an alter ego named Tyrone, I guess that's the nigga, was about to become unleashed, exclamation point. 
I felt like Craig thought I was dumb and was trying to insult my intelligence. Yes, baby, he was playing all in your face. After seeing all that I saw on his phone, comma, it was a confirmation that I definitely didn't need to be engaged or together with his ass. Exclamation point. I threw his phone in the glass of water sitting in front of him and tell him to go marry that bitch, Ale, and have a good life. Why don't you go ask that bitch for money? Don't be asking me. That's what that gives me. It gives me very much baby girl sitting in the car and Craig asking her for that $200 and seeing the crackhead behind it. And she said, won't you get ask that bitch for some money? <laughs> he said that after show, he had an alter ego. To, he did it. Okay, I don't watch the after show because I don't be caring. Okay. I threw his phone in a glass of water in front of him and told him go marry that bitch Ellen and have a good life. I then got up and strutted out of the restaurant. Exclamation point. I knew I was becoming a different me, comma. I began to crave more success within my career, comma. A different kind of love and respect from a partner, period. I was seeking an overall triumph of excitement and change in my life, comma. I was ready for a challenge, comma. Something that would elevate myself in every aspect of my life, period. End of chapter. That better not have been an iPhone. <laughs> Chapter 5. It's called Fabulously Fearful. Oh, shit. We on date naps. Hold on. Here we go. Date naps were frequent and... Com and, a com and Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm putting words in there that are not there. Dating apps were the frequent and convenient way of quick hookups or any connection of your preference with an individual. Period. Jacked, comma, grinder, comma, and Tinder were my main gay apps my single friends constantly lingered on, period. I was newly single and didn't really have an interest or the patience to get on the apps, period. In all honesty, I was known to always be the committed type amongst my group of friends, period, in the paragraph. While there were times, comma, I witnessed my friends hopping on the apps and initi initiating a quick hookup, comma, I cringed at the idea of meeting a complete stranger online and instantly hooking up with them, period. My friends would always joke up with me and often mention I needed to let loose and have some fun, in quotation marks, by getting on the app, period, in the paragraph. I have one friend named Ashton who was a daredevil and stayed on a particular app meeting various men. Now, does he mean Ashton from the Hot Boys of Houston? Because this is in Texas. Ashton, baby, come down to the, to, the, to the front of the congregation and let us know if this is you. And I named, wait, wait. Uh, Ashton was daredevil and stayed on a particular app meeting various men, comma. I said he was very promiscuous. Ooh, not you done threw your friend under the bus calling him a whore. Ashton had no shame in his game, letting our friends know specific details of his encounters. He'd have with men that he met online, period, end of pop paragraph. One day I was at the barbershop getting my hair cut, comma, a mutual friend of Ashton, and I named Aaron, called me. Aaron said, Ashton is gone, exclamation point. Well, it can't be our Ashton, because Ashton is still alive. I was assuming Aaron was joking, comma, simply because Aaron was a particular friend known to be sarcastic and a jokester. Period. I asked Aaron what was he talking about and begged him to provide me more details for clarity. Aaron informed me that Ashton was mur Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Jesus. He said Ashton was murdered upon meeting someone he had met on Jack the night before. Period. in the paragraph. Okay. Our entourage of friends were shaken up about the news we had received about Ashton's murder. Period. As the investigation proceeded and the news got out to the media, period, it was determined that the killer who murdered our friend was perpetrating to be a gay man on the app. Period. The unalivers intentions were to rob our friend, period. Apparently, once Ashton agreed to meet with the guy, the encounter went wrong immediately. 
Ashton invited the unaliver to his home, and once he arrived, comma, a gun was pulled out on Ashton in his home, period. The unaliver demanded money and the keys to his car, period. Ashton and the guy got into a scuffle due to Ashton refusing to give up his wallet and keys to his car. Ashton was shot 22 times, and the unaliver fled Ashton's home. Depending on the weapon that he was used, in order to shoot that man that many times, he would have had to reload. That's crazy. Ashton was from a small town in Arkansas named McGee, comma, all of his family lived in his hometown, period. Ashton did not have any family in the Houston area, period. Ashton's family was devastated regarding his death, period. The family of Ashton began gathering and preparing final arrangements for our friend, period. The weekend of Ashton's funeral, my group of friends and I decided to all take a road trip together from Houston to McGee to attend his funeral. The drive to McGee, which was about six hours period, I remember the car ride to the small town. It was a bit scenic and very country. Exclamation point. End of paragraph. It could, absolutely could have. Uh, new, new paragraph. After laying our friend to rest and upon arriving back in Houston, comma, the news of the murder continued to spread everywhere all over social media on local and national news segments. At the time, I was still working with a local Houston television network, comma, the producers also wanted to discuss the story on an upcoming segment period. The producers wanted to do a live dating online awareness segment special, period. I was asked by the producing team to sit on the panel and discuss my opinions about the dangers of online dating and Ashton's murder, period. I was a bit indecisive about publicly discussing the murder. My huge concern was privacy and respect for Ashton's family as they were still grieving, period. I decided to reach out to Ashton's sister to get permission to speak about her brother's murder. Ashton's sister encouraged me to speak about her brother's murder. Ashton's sister told me that she wanted someone to put exposure on the dangers behind meeting random people off the app that her brother was on consistently. I built up strength. New paragraph. I built up strength and courageously sat in front of cameras to discuss the situation, period. After my interview on the live segment, comma, I received so much positive feedback and messages from people all over, period. In fact, my interview began to get shared amongst other city broadcast news stations and network, period. End of paragraph. Within six months, I had lost two good friends. Then... Comma, then now in February of 2019, my granny, his father's mama, passed away. I never really knew that com that common saying, death comes in threes, meant until now. My granny was such a sweet lady, comma, you could sit and listen to her talk as she shared stories for hours. I remember visiting my granny's house in Fifth Ward off of Houston often. My granny's house was always spotless and clean. Everything in my granny's house was surrounded by crystal figurines, dolls, photographs of all her grandchildren, and white furniture wiped in plastic. I know that's damn right. I know that's damn right. New paragraph. Clara, my beloved granny, comma, had this one big blue fluffy recliner chair she loved to lounge in and sit in, period. You couldn't get her to ever get up and leave her favorite recliner chair. Period. For many years, Granny took care of my grandpa before he passed and my great-grandma, who lived to be 100 years old at the same time in the same house with her. Period. My Granny was truly a superwoman. Comma. I vividly really remember the days I sit and talk to Granny and she would always uplift my spirit no matter what mood I was in. Period. Clara encouraged me to be happy no matter what was going on in life at the time, period. My granny was a strong, comma, praying, comma, and smart woman. She would always preach about God's say-so and not being afraid of death, period, in the paragraph. During my granny's funeral, comma, her service was absolutely beautiful, period. Everything was well planned and organized, period. Although I was sad about the passing of my granny, comma, I was at peace, 
knowing that she could truly rest and long and I know he mean and no longer have to suffer body aches. Period. My granny had experienced body pain from lifting and physically taking care of her mother and my grandfather for many years. Clara went on for years neglecting her own health and self-care, period. New paragraph. My heart really was hurting for my father, period. Although my daddy got remarried, comma, I knew he had experienced a divorce with my mom and then the passing of his mother, period. Eventually, my father and I became close again, comma, just how we were when I was a kid, period. New paragraph. Listen, because my grandmama had on her furniture, and if... Listen, you, you walk right past that foyer, that, that one room off the foyer with the white furniture and plastic. That's only if the pastor is coming to visit. Amen. Amen. At the beginning of the new year, comma, I began to have a yearning to further challenge myself in life, period. I had begun working. I had, okay. I had been working part time as a new home consultant for one of my favorite residential builders, comma, Toll Brothers and full-time as the director of marketing for a firm, period. I felt at times that I was outgrowing situations, comma, living in Houston, period. I became bored with my social life, and I even began having a strong interest in real estate along with the operational side of things, period, in the paragraph. One weekend, I decided to work a new build home tour at my part-time gig, period. On this particular day, comma, my associate that I was working with stepped out for lunch, and I covered the tour by myself, period. An older white guy came into the inventory home, comma. I noticed he was dressed very hick-like and had a scruffy appearance, period. I introduced myself and greeted the guy, asking him my general questions. End of paragraph. The first thing that came out of the guy's mouth was, I didn't expect a soft nigger like yourself to be in a home like this, exclamation point. I am sorry, excuse me? <laughs> It's the casual racism for me. Okay. Wow. I was appalled by this man's response to me, comma. I had never in my life experienced that type of racial slur and disrespect, period. Anyone? New paragraph. I'm sorry. Right. How do we? Are we okay. It's, it's like whiplash. How he jumps from. Okay. Anyone who truly knows me, no, I try. I don't tolerate BS from anyone, exclamation point. I tried my hardest not to pick up the stack of brochures near me and throw them at this country mental. Menthol smelling hick ass bastard. Oh God. My associate Brittany walked in on from lunch right on time, period. Brittany could tell by the look on my face I was disturbed. Brittany was a white female around my age, period. As soon as Brittany walked in, the guy greeted her politely and get asking questions about the inventory home, period. New paragraph. I decided to walk out that day of work. I was so livid and beyond pissed off. I had been working with builders. With new inventory homes for about three years period after experiencing ignorance that day i didn't even want to return back to work again period new paragraph the following weekend that i decided to return and work in another inventory home comma one of the regional directors were on site visiting period i had the chance to sit down and formally meet the director over the site mary was the director over the site she was an older white woman period many times Mary kind of reminded me of Barbara Walters by her mannerisms and style, period. Mary was very precise and not so compassionate. Ooh. Oh, no, that Mary was a bitch. I explained to Mary the situation that had occurred the prior weekend, period. Mary didn't seem to care or have any sympathy. <laughs> She's like, nigga, what that got to do with me? <laughs> she said, dance, nigga, and sell these motherfucking houses, bitch. That's what you fucking do. I love the check player. I don't give a damn. To be honest, she seemed to be nonchalant and more focused on the production and operation of the homes in the community with the builder, period, in the paragraph. Later in the evening, as I was wrapping up the day, Mary requested to speak with me, period. I had a gut feeling it would not be a pleasant conversation, comma. As I was sitting with Mary, I noticed she had a couple pieces of paper in her hand, period. Mary expressed to me that my partnership with the builder was no longer needed, in quotation marks, and I was being let go. Child, you got fired. Oh, damn. New paragraph. To be honest, I was not even surprised by the news I had received about being let go, in quotation marks. Overall, I felt like I was racially profiled, and not to mention the director seemed to dislike someone like me, semicolon, black, comma, gay, comma, and professional, period. 
At the time, I was the only minority working for the builder, comma, while everyone else was white, period. I was also top producer, semicolon. I received outstanding accolades and recognition throughout my three years with the builder, period, in the paragraph. My parents always raised me to have multiple streams of income, period. I was now down to having just one stream of income, period. Again, I felt like I needed a change in my life, especially with my career. One day, I decided to enroll in real estate school and obtain my license to be a realtor. Mm -hmm. I figured I had the time to spare and commit and my focus to taking the necessary courses to obtain my license, period. Six to seven months went by throughout attending online classes and taking several quizzes and then finally the state exam. I had failed the state exam the first time and then a month later I decided to take the exam again and finally passed it. Well, not everybody passed. Clearly, everybody doesn't pass the state licensing exam the first time. Like uh, Suge Knight's son, when they had that really selling on that show on that religious show on uh, MTV, he had to take it a couple of times. I officially became a licensed realtor after a total of nine months. I then began to think about my career path long term. Period. Dallas was a city a lot of my friends began to move to for career opportunities, and I honestly was contemplating on doing the same. Relocating to Dallas seemed like a great idea, comma. It wasn't far from Houston. So many corporations and businesses are based in the Dallas area, and most of my friends resided there, period. New paragraph. I eventually discussed the idea with my mama, comma. She thought it would be a great decision. My mother encouraged me to begin looking for places to live and changing my career to something I enjoyed doing in real estate. The hunt was on. I began applying for several positions in Dallas. There were several HOA and property managed related jobs posted online. Daily, it was my goal to apply to at least five job postings a day. After a couple of days of submitting my resume to different companies, I began to receive an abundant amount of phone calls and interview requests. Things began to move way quicker than I expected upon commuting back and forth to Dallas to conduct interviews and search for an apartment. Everything seemed to work in my favor. I had three job offers on the table and found a beautiful apartment in Dallas. I decided to step out on faith and sign a lease and move within two months. Yes. Hey, Monk Chip. Okay. Uh, in the paragraph, my mother was my backbone throughout the whole transition to Dallas period. I was always expressed to her how nervous I was about the move. I had finally accepted one position with an HOA management company in Dallas as an HOA manager. My designated start date for the position aligned perfectly with my official move-in date at my new apartment. I gave my notice of resignation to my company in Houston, where I was working full-time as the director of marketing. Time began to approach very quickly regarding relocating. Two to three weeks prior, I began packing and mentally preparing myself for the change. It was the early fall of 2019, and it was moving day. I didn't know I had so much perseverance and courage until the day I left Houston. My U-Haul was completely packed up with my white BMW attached to the back of it. It was just me, myself, and I departing Houston. I guess no Craig. He left Craig at the restaurant and never saw. Hi, Hester. Ever again. Chapter 6. Can I have this moment forever? Question mark. That's the title of chapter 6. I was settled and loved Dallas. That was a lot. That last chapter was a whole lot. A lot happened. It was real heavy and then it was real boring because who cares? Okay, let me shut up. I was settled in the love Dallas. Socially, professionally, and personally, I was very happy. My new position as an HOA manager was enjoyable and I was felt right at home living in my new apartment. My new job required me to travel often to Atlanta, Georgia, and I was responsible for managing several HOAs and properties. One particular weekend, some friends and I decided to take a road trip down to New Orleans to celebrate my transition to Dallas. The weekend my friends and I decided to go down to New Orleans happened to be the beginning of Mardi Gras! Exclamation point. Listen, anyone who has ever visited New Orleans knows that the city is full of partying, drinking, and good food. I definitely was prepared to celebrate my new adventure in life. I was single, began to thrive in my new career, and experienced personal growth. Period. 
One night, my friends and I got dressed and went out to hang on Bourbon Street, period. The first bar we went to was the Unknown Bar, The Page is the name of the bar, which is where everyone goes to. When we arrived at the bar, of course, my friends and I went straight to the bar, exclamation point. My drink of choice was always Crown, Apple, and Cranberry, which was exactly what I ordered. The bar was so packed, so many friends from different cities were in town as well. The vibes were great, and everyone was having a good time. I noticed that there was a tall, handsome guy. Oh, oh wait a minute. There's a nigga. All right. Uh, a tall, handsome guy standing against the wall. I located the wall located behind me, period. Everyone now and then. Everyone. everyone wait. That doesn't make sense. I think he meant every now and then, not everyone. Okay. Uh, everyone now and then, I glanced at him and he glanced at me casually. This guy kind of looked like the, rant, the rapper Common. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, my friends came over towards me and mentioned they wanted to walk down Bourbon Street to another spot. I wasn't quite ready to leave. My friends also noticed my eyes kept wandering towards the direction behind me. Period. End of paragraph. I told my friends I'd meet up with them in a bit and they could leave the bar without me. So, you had a friend who was unalived by meeting up with a stranger that he didn't know. And you decide not to go with your friends and let, and they let you be left behind. So you can possibly meet this stranger. You may have perseverance, but you ain't got no self-preservation, nigga. What are you talking about? No, you cannot leave me. Let me slide on this nigga and get his number and then we can go. Jesus Christ. Tell my friends I meet up with them in a bit and they could leave the bar without me. No, you can't leave the bar. One for all and all for one. It was time for another drink as I walked toward the bar. The handsome guy who looked like Common came and stood next to me. Go to hell. He probably did not look like Common. He was probably just born with it. The bartender came over to me and asked for my order. Of course, I ordered my typical crown apple and cranberry. The whole time I could see the guy out the corner of my eye looking at me, exclamation point. Before I walked off, he asked me for my name and he introduced himself as Grant. It's Greg, <laughs> y'all. We found Greg. We found Greg. Our eyes blocked and it was an instant connection. We stood at the bar for almost an hour talking. Greg mentioned he lived in Nola but grew up in Baton Rouge. New paragraph. <laughs> I eventually told Greg I had to leave him and go meet up with my friends. We agreed to exchange phone numbers and keep in contact throughout the night. I finally linked up with my friends at another bar on Bourbon Street. The whole time I was out with my friends, Greg and I were texting nonstop. Exclamation point. I told my friends about Greg and our encounter. Cindy Colin, they were encouraging me to spend time with him while in town before we departed New Orleans. Girl, go get you some dick. That's what they were saying. Now, perseverance that's been stuck on stupid. Oh, my God. The next day, we got up and got dressed for brunch. I invited Greg to brunch as well as he agreed to meet us for brunch at Morrow's. The vibes were great and mimosas were flowing. Later in the evening, we were planning to get back on the road and head back to Dallas. Greg extended the invite to his house after brunch, but I was not sure about taking him up on that offer. I would hope not. I don't know, Tracy. Greg had such an intriguing charm to himself, and he seemed equally in tune with me as I was into him. I made a risky decision to hang out with him for a bit after brunch. I was so nervous about going to Greg's house, I decided to share my... I would... Like, why haven't you been sharing your location this entire time? This is Greg. This is not Craig who got left uh, at the restaurant with his phone in the water. This is Greg. Greg is somebody different, I guess. 
He said, I decided to share my location on my iPhone with my friends as a departed wage. Now, here's my thing. Why didn't you start sharing your location with them the night before when they left you at the one bar to go to the other bar so that y'all could have the idea of where each other That don't mean, okay. I decided to share my location on my iPhone with my friends as I departed ways from them. New paragraph. Once we arrived back in Greg's house, we, my friends were texting me so much I could barely enjoy the little time with Greg. I guess my friends were truly concerned about my well-being because you went to a stranger nigga's house in a city you don't live in. I guess my friends were truly concerned with my well-being. Greg and I talked a lot and had some great conversations, getting to know each other in a short time frame. After a while, I figured it was time for me to head back to my friends at the hotel. I still had to pack up my belongings in the hotel room. Yeah. By the time I arrived back at the hotel, my friends had already gathered my stuff and we were ready to get back on the road. During our ride back to Dallas, Greg and I texted each other almost a whole seven-hour ride. My friends were joking with me saying, looks, tell he met his husband and Nola. We all laughed and joked. If he, this is the nigga he ended up marrying, I'm going to scream. Once we got back to Dallas and settled the communication between Greg and I became very consistent. It seemed like we talked all day and every day. Anyone who knows me knows that I don't like to talk on the phone at all. Eventually, weeks and even a month or two passed. Greg and I were still at it with the keeping in touch and talking every day. Eventually, Greg and I started discussing travel plans to spend time with each other. Greg's birthday was approaching and he shared with me that he was unsure what he wanted to do for his birthday. Early March of 2020, a huge Outbreak out of COVID started to spread. People were getting sick and a lot of people's health began to decline. Some individuals were even passing away from the virus, we know. New paragraph. Travel bans began to be put in place due to the virus spreading everywhere. Even though the crazy pandemic, Greg and I still remained in contact and never missed a beat. A week or two before Greg's birthday, he told me he would be coming to Dallas. Many public places were closed and had restrictions. We were both we both were aware that there would be limited things to do during his birthday in town. New paragraph. I decided that I would host a small birthday gathering for Greg at my house. We actually had mutual friends who lived in Dallas. Greg invited a couple of his local friends, and I invited my friends who lived in the city as well. The gathering was intimate with plenty of good food, drinks, games, karaoke, and birthday cake. I requested that everyone who I invited complete a COVID test and ensure that they were COVID-free. Exclamation point. It is. Everyone, including Greg, had a good time at my house for his birthday. Greg visits Dallas, ended up being extended an extra week. Flights were being canceled at the airport due to crazy outbreaks of COVID. During the extra time Greg spent in Dallas, things really got serious between us. They started fucking. That's what I that's I read between the lines. That's what I read between the lines. They started fucking. We <laughs> we shared precious and intimate moments together. That's I was correct. That's him confirming me being correct. Um, within a short amount of time, feelings began to get deep between the two of them. If this is the nigga that he married, Greg was finally able to get on a flight back to New Orleans. Greg vulnerably shared and expressed his feelings he had for me and told me he didn't want to leave. Does Greg not have a job that he needs to get back to? An apartment that he needs to pay for? What is happening? I reassured him that I would be coming to visit him very soon. I ended up booking a flight in the following two weeks to fly out to New Orleans. I was so unsure and scared about traveling during the pandemic. I was working remote at the time, so I didn't have to be back in Dallas within a certain day or time. I brought my work laptop with me to New Orleans and worked remotely throughout my time there. I spent almost a whole month in New Orleans with Greg. Okay. During my month spent with Greg, things definitely got heated between us, but in a good way. LOL! Exclamation point. The chemistry between the two of us was definitely strong, and we became so inseparable. The both of us were beginning to cherish the little things and moments together, like going to the park, the grocery store, while wearing those crazy N95 masks, and just hanging out inside of Greg's place, staying up late, watching movies. Greg was so into sports, and I was the opposite. LOL. I remember him making me sit and watch sports games with him. I've been there. The dick is good, so you just you watch the foosball because you even though you don't give a damn. Traveling and airline tickets became inexpensive during the pandemic. After frequent trips to and from New Orleans and Dallas, we decided to take our first vacation together. 
in June, we took a trip to Cancun and we enjoyed every moment of this vacation together. We both learned so much more about each other. We grew such a spontaneous and exciting bond together over time. After our trip to Cancun, things got even more serious in the paragraph. Upon being with my new company in position for six months, I was promoted and coincidentally offered a position in our Louisiana territory of Mandeville slash Covington, which was the North Shore of New Orleans. I shared the news with Greg and he was excited about the news. Although I had not accepted the position completely, I was indecisive about the thought of living in Louisiana. The huge benefit for Greg and me would be that we'd be closer to each other and possibly cohabitate. During our trip to Can in Cancun, the two of us had already agreed to date exclusively. I would think so. You're leaving out the country with this nigga. I think at some point, the two of us had hopes of our long distance relationship flourishing into us being physically closer to one another. I discussed the opportunity with my mama and she said, the, and she was so supportive and encouraged me to take the opportunity. I accepted the position with my company and literally the timing of everything seemed all too perfect. And once and on time. The lease at my apartment in Dallas was ending soon, and Greg was ending soon in New Orleans as well. Greg and I started having serious conversations about cohabitating during, along with finances. Now, here's my question. Uh, even though his lease was coming up, and your lease was coming up, y'all talk about cohabitating. But your job is on the North Shore of Louisiana. Now, I don't know how that is, how far that is from Baton Rouge or New Orleans. I, I'm not sure about the logistics of, of where things are. My thing is, where is his job at? Is his job remote? Can he work from anywhere? That's my question. What is his job? What does he do? And can he move freely about the 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 state and live anywhere and work from anywhere in the state and it, it don't be a problem for him. Hmm. Well, they discussed finances and the two of us eventually agreed to move into a new apartment together in New Orleans. Okay, so he's still in the city. I shared the news with my friends that I was leaving Dallas and relocating to New Orleans. The majority of my friends were a bit surprised simply because I had only been in Dallas for like the nine months. So how would you... Okay, you said it was close to the boat. Okay, I'll shut up. New paragraph. Greg eventually shared with me that his mother had been fighting cancer ongoing for about four Jesus. About four years. Greg was very close to his mother and was pretty much her caretaker during the times her health would decline. Greg leaving or relocating from Louisiana would have never been a good idea during that particular time. Because he was taking care of his mama when she got sick. Welcome to Nature Makes Sense. Greg's mother, Karen, was a sweet Karen and a and courageous woman. Some days were better than others pertaining to her health and spirit. Oh, well, we bless God for Sister Cameron. Greg and I chose to move into an apartment together that was located in the suburbs of New Orleans. Matari? Matari? I'm not sure. I'm still saying that right. As Greg and I became acclimated and settled in living with each other, we spent many weekends attending Pelican basketball games, Saints football games, dining out at restaurants, on the lakeshore, shopping at the canal shop malls and playing the slot machines at Harrow's Casino. Oh, not we at the casino pulling slots. New paragraph. The downside of taking on the new position with my company in Mandeville, Covington, Louisiana, was the long commute from our home to the office. My daily drive into the office was about 45 minutes. I hated driving those parts along Causeway Bridge, especially when it, it was inclement weather. When it was windy, you could feel the bridge rocking while driving. It was so scary, exclamation point. I guess I don't really have issues with bridges because I'm from Virginia where our bridge goes underneath the water. And I just, it ain't never, just me? Okay, I'm going to shut up. The Causeway Bridge was known to be one of the longest bridges in the U.S. October 13, 2020, we said, I, I told you he married this nigga. I told y'all he married I knew that's where this was going. On October 13, 2020, we said, I do, exclamation point. Greg and I spontaneously decided to commit to each other at the Justice of the Peace in the city courthouse. The two of us had decided over time we had a strong desire to spend the rest of our lives together. It was a breezy, fall, cool day after working hours. We both had just got off work and went to the courthouse randomly and began to 
the process. I could not believe I was getting married to someone within a whole hour in the same day. I started to feel a bit guilty because I didn't even tell my mama first. You got married, you didn't tell your mom. Wow. We had already stopped at the local jewelry store on the way to the courthouse and picked out rings. We back to rings. We back to rings, children. We back to rings. We back to rings. Oh, God. We exchanged vows in the front of the judge and we became one. I was a damn husband, exclamation point. I was excited, nervous, and had a bunch of other emotions. I decided not to change my name simply because my name was carried through the legacy of my grandfather and daddy and wanted to keep my full original name as Tedley Phillips III. Greg and I kept our marriage to ourselves for about a month. I eventually posted the news on my social media and the news got out very quickly. I began to get... I'm going to shut up. I'm going to keep reading. And then got out quickly. I began to get phone calls back to back. A lot of our friends thought it was a joke. My mom was the first to call. She was very disappointed that I didn't tell her I decided to get married. But over time, she was happy for me, period. Greg's mom was happy about the news since she and supported us as well since it was still the brink of COVID. We couldn't really have a big ceremony to celebrate. Both of us wanted a huge party at a venue, but due to restrictions, we couldn't do so. We agreed that we would plan a ceremony and a celebration sometime the following year. We decided to take a trip to the Dominican Republic. Dominic, that's not how you spell that. Oh, Dominic Republic, that's what, uh, that's how it's, okay. To celebrate our first Christmas together and honeymoon. The two of us had never spent a holiday away from our families. The trip to Dominic he said it again wrong again. Dominic Republic was amazing and so relaxing as Greg and I enjoyed our trip. We reflected on our lot together. We had discussions about how fast our relationship was moving, if it was satisfied with our decision to get married. The two of us agreed that marriage was truly what we wanted and felt no resentment towards our decision. Oh shit, here we go. Later in the year, Greg was diagnosed with high-functioning depression. There were some rough times. We began to face dealing with his mood swings. When it all came, when it came to his mood swings, the majority of his stress was due to his mother's fight with cancer. Understandable. I knew it was far for him to witness his mother's health decline over time. I always tried my best to be supportive and emotionally there for him. Unfortunately, there were times we had arguments at home and disagreements about the littlest things. Regardless of how tough things got, I always encouraged Greg and things would get better and allow God to handle his worries. End of paragraph, end of chapter. Okay, I'm going to take a small intermission. Uh, I'm old and my bladder said, girl, you need to go to the bathroom. So, uh, enjoy this. I will be right back. I just got to run to the little girl's room and I'll be right back and we'll pick up on chapter seven. We're almost done. We got two chapters left. But my bladder said, you, you ain't going to make it. So, I'll be right. Hold, the, hold your line. I'll be right. Hey, yo, Ebony. They might get mad at you for this one, Baba. They can see you with Ebony, Ebony. We gon' talk about everything, everything. Come get these lies. Let me shake a little lies. Fill up your glass. Keep it with lies. They can see you with Ebony, Ebony. We gon' talk about everything, everything. Go get these lies. Let me take a little lie. Fill up your glass. Be the good Thank <laughs> you.
I'm gonna push me over, child. Rude, the disrespect. The disrespect of my children, y'all. Ugh. Now my daughter tried to push me over in the hallway. Now I'm running back and forth like a crazy person. Hold on, hold on. I feel like this chair is so, it's too high or something. I don't know. But I don't want it to be too low because then I feel like. <sighs> All right. All right. We're back. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me for that commercial work. I'm going to have to fix a video to do a commercial work. In the Somebody sponsored me to do a commercial work. Amen. All right. So. Hold on. Chat the chat. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure I'm gonna figure out how to loop it. I'm gonna do a little looping situation. I'll figure it out. Chat the seven desires. I feel like this depression thing is going to be an excuse for come on focus. An excuse for whatever happens to for this situation not to be successful but we gonna we gonna see okay i was moving and grooving in my new position comma despite the treacherous drive into the office i was enjoying my job exclamation point greg worked in the insurance industry as an adjuster his job was typically stressful as he was required to meet deadlines greg's mom's health wasn't really improving and things began to get very hectic. Greg suddenly lost his job and all hell began to break loose in our home. Oh, not that baby lost his job. Yes, it's a, I just still want a little dress today. Because <laughs> you know, some days I just be in some little booty shorts and the yacht game is nobody has time for it. And he lost his job. Greg then lost his job, y'all. All right, for a while I was Greg's backbone. I was your lover and your secretary, working every day of the week. Was at the job. Okay, Michelle. For a while, I'm Greg's back. Well, throughout this difficult time, I was able to get him in the door with my company and hired on with a job through my direct affiliation with my other peers in my company. For the most part, Greg enjoyed his new job. He wasn't, he wasn't jobless for long. He led me to believe that he was catching on quickly and soaring upwards. Now he led you to believe, not it was a lie. At least twice a week, we would take a drive out to Baton Rouge to visit Karen, Greg's mama. Karen enjoyed when we came over and I always loved sitting in the living room, having deep bonding conversations with her about life and Greg and, about life and Greg and I future. It should be Greg's and I future. Okay. We all know that this wasn't proof for it. Karen and I became very close, comma. Sometimes we would call each other in gossip, period. Many times, comma, Karen would express how appreciative she had me as her son-in-law, period. New paragraph. Over time, Greg began to express to me that he was mentally not happy and his depression was defeating him. Just say it. Did he have a... Uh, was he, I wonder, was, was he on medication? Was he doing talk therapy? Like, what was he doing to combat the depression? Is my question. Uh, over time, Greg can express he, he was not mentally, he was mentally not happy and his depression was defeating him while living in the New Orleans area. I never really felt safe. There were times I feared leaving the house after daylight with the fear of something bad happening to me if I left the house alone. What? Huh? I'm confused. How do we get to, you don't feel safe? Oh, listen, uh, Kendall has said, oh, since you're going to read the whole book, let's give you the page count. We're on page 95 of 146. We, we trucking along, ain't we? Trucking along. I, my next live is late. Uh, I might have to push that up back to, I don't know, I'll talk to a friend. Um... Crime was really bad in the New Orleans area at the time. Okay, because I was like, how did we get to you scared to leave the house? There was an ongoing crime spree of people randomly shooting through, through innocent individuals' car windows at the stoplights and robbing them. Oh, Jesus. My family and friends began to become worried. I would always drag Greg with me whenever I went most of the time. 
wherever I went most of the time. If I chose to leave the house at night, stress began to become a huge wedge between Greg and I marriage. I was his counselor, lover, friend, and everything else you could imagine. There were times I began to feel that what I was pouring into him wasn't being reciprocated into me. Okay. By the grace of God, Karen's health began to improve. Yes, amen. Karen was beginning to get into great spirit, especially physically. Greg's whole aura began to change, and I could feel a shift for the better with his attitude in our marriage. At one point, Greg and I both became overwhelmed by the unsafe atmosphere in New Orleans, and we were beginning to consider moving back to Dallas together. I did not. I did not feel prepared. You saw my confusion, too, because I was like, wait, how did we get to... That was in the same paragraph that Greg was struggling, and then now you're scared to go outside of the house. Child. One day after work, I came home and Greg surprised me by applying for an apartment in Dallas and was approved. I was a bit shocked that he took the initiative and decided that we were possibly going to be moving to Dallas together. My biggest concern was the well-being of his mother. He expressed to me that since he witnessed his mother's self-improving, the move should not be an issue. It was easy for me to make the transition back to Dallas with my company because they were that's where my original office was. Surprisingly, as we shared the news that we decided to move to Dallas, Karen was supportive and encouraged us to do whatever made us happy because that's a good mama. That's absolutely a good mama. In the new year of 2021, and we were on our way back to Dallas for good. Our new place was beautiful, and both of us were excited about a new chapter together in Dallas. Now, let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. I'm thirsty, so y'all. I'm going to ask this question while I press something to drink out of my fridge. So let me ask this. What are we at that being? Um, is this the friend that he was married to that's George's friend? Is this the friend... That he, that George and, 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 and the boy, because this, this is 2021. So is this young man the friend that they fell out over? We're going to see. Okay. It was the new year 2021 and we were on our way back to Dallas for good. Our new place was beautiful and both of us were excited about a new chapter together in Dallas. New paragraph. Early through the midpoint of the year, things were blossoming into our marriage for the most part. We continued taking random spontaneous trips together. Greg was also part of a larger... Uh, oh, shit. Let me try that again. Greg was also part of a basketball league, so often I traveled to different cities to support him for his games. I enjoyed seeing Greg do things that kept his mind stimulated and his attitude optimistic while his mom was battling cancer. As the fall approached, Karen's health began to decline once again. She was admitted in and out of hospital on different locations. I started to see the demise of Greg's hope and optimism at the time. Greg would take trips back and forth to Louisiana to check on his mother from time to time. There were times I felt hopeless and as if losing, I was losing my own sanity. The majority of my focus was on Greg's mental state and well-being. I neglected my own self at times, regardless of the little disagreements we would have. I always took the grunt of Greg's outlash and frustration. Thanksgiving holiday was approaching and Greg and I made arrangements to spend Thanksgiving with his mother in Baton Rouge. I tried my best to uplift Greg's spirit for the holiday. I coordinated the whole dinner menu for Thanksgiving. Karen couldn't do much physically on her own. She was in home hospice and needed tender care. Oh, God, they give you hospice at the end. Oh, uh, We enjoyed spending Thanksgiving with Greg's mother after having dinner. Everyone was full. Everyone will full. Every, okay, that's not what the word that should be. Everyone will full and begin to relax. At the time, Greg's aunt was in town and also visiting. She stayed at Karen's house to help watch over her. Greg and I decided to drive into New Orleans for the Bayou Classic festivities a bit before midnight. While we were out in New Orleans, we received a call from Greg's aunt, 
and she recommended that we should come back to Karen's house. We were told the hospice nurses had arrived and Karen's breathing and heart rate had slowed down dramatically. Yeah, that's you normally get the hospice at the end. That's what happened with my grandma. During the our drive back to Baton Rouge, Greg was in shambles and very emotionally, rightfully so. I didn't know what to do or say or to assure him things would be okay. There's nothing you can do or say. Just go ahead and um, just be there. That's, that's all you need to do. Once we arrived back at Karen's house, there were several other family members at the house too. Everyone's gathered around Karen's bed and praying things didn't seem to be going well. Greg began to pace in and out of the house and cry. November 26th, 2021, Karen's fight with cancer ended. She transitioned peacefully in her home. She was surrounded by several family members, including Greg and me. I felt so much hurt and sadness for Greg. He had always been very close to his mother. A week later, we made plans to extend our visit in Louisiana so that we could make funeral burial arrangements for Miss Karen. Greg's mother had already had her burial insurance and burial arrangements somewhat pre-planned and organized. She was an intelligent woman and was not oblivious to knowing that one day she'd be soon transitioning. We sat with the funeral home and staff to finalize the details regarding the homegoing service. Greg could barely speak and keep his head up during the meeting slash planning. There were moments when I had to speak directly to the, fun the funeral director and make court make slash coordinate affirmative details. That was the same for me. My mom had to do all the arrangements. I could I couldn't do any of it. I I wasn't mentally fit to do any of that. On December 8, 2021, we laid Karen to rest. Till this day, I cannot imagine the pain and hurt Greg experienced burying his mother. I knew that once we got back to Dallas, the grieving phase would be tough for Greg. Weeks after returning back to Dallas, things were not just the same between Greg and I. There were times we got into heated arguments over the littlest things. I always made excuses for his reckless and angry behavior due to him grieving his mother's death. Things began to get unbearable and disrespectful. Semicolon. I remember it was New Year's Day of 2022 and we had just returned home from having dinner and attending a party together. We had a mild disagreement that blew up into a huge dispute. Greg began to raise his voice very loudly. Greg became very defensive and picked up a vase and then slammed it on the hardwood floor in the living room. Prior to the argument, I've never witnessed him this upset about a verbal disagreement. I was very disappointed, upset, and began to feel unsafe. I wasn't sure how much more anger I could witness from Greg. I, and he needed he needed a grief counselor because anger is one of the stages of grief. I instantly stopped arguing with him and became silent. I went into the bedroom to calm down and slam the door. I guess me cutting him off and no longer talking to him in that moment added fuel to the fire. Next thing I knew, Greg burst through the door like the Hulk and began to yell again. At the time, I told Greg I felt unsafe after seeing him aggressively slam the glass face on the floor. Greg continued to yell and approach me. I abruptly requested that he back away from me and get out of my face. It seemed like it was impossible to calm him down. I then threatened to call the police if he didn't lower his voice and stop yelling at me. It seemed as soon as I mentioned that I would called the police, he became even more angry. This time he picked up a laundry basket full of clothing and threw it towards me. It does not. It doesn't. Um, initially, I initially got angry. I reached for my cell phone, which was sitting on the bed and yelled, that's it, I'm calling the police. Greg then launched towards me, grabbing my lower leg as I was leaping towards the bed to grab my phone. As Greg grabbed my leg, his nails scratched my lower leg, causing me to begin to bleed. At this point, I couldn't believe what transpired between us. As I had the phone in hand, I dialed 911. The operator got on the line. I explained to her the situation that occurred. The operator then told me she was having an officer come out to possibly defuse the altercation. Once I got off the phone with the police, that's when Greg became calm. He looked at me in disbelief and asked, why would I call the police on him? I had nothing else to say to him as I felt threatened and disappointed with his actions. Greg grabbed his car keys and left the apartment. I remained in the apartment until the police arrived. Maybe about 15 to 20 minutes later, two policemen arrived at the apartment. 
Greg was still gone and I had no clue where he went. I sat with the policemen and provided a statement. As they were documenting my statement, they then took a picture of the bloody scratch on my leg. After concluding my statement, the police asked me to give Craig a call. Oh, Jesus Christ. To give Craig a call and let him know he needed to come back to provide a statement to the police regarding his side of the story. No, they can't. He, they want to come back so they can arrest him. Greg came back to the apartment very quickly. He had provided his side of the story regarding the incident. The policemen stepped outside momentarily to talk amongst themselves and decide what charges they were going to press and who they were going to arrest. While the police, that's what I, I added that. That's what I added to. While the policemen were outside, we both looked at each other and began to shed tears. I honestly began to feel guilty for calling the police. I was so uncertain if... And that does that sentence doesn't make any you missing some words on the sentence. I was so uncertain if a made an accurate decision or not. Hey. The officers came back inside, apprehended Greg, and handcuffed him. I told y'all that that's they were trying to figure out what charges they were gonna press and who they were gonna arrest. And then that they tricked Greg to come back to the house. So they could make an accurate decision about what what it was and what it wasn't and who needs to go to jail. The officers came back and apprehended Greg and handcuffed him. The officers told us he was being arrested for assault with physical evidence. Both of us were speechless and shocked. I don't know why you're speechless and shocked. You called the police to come arrest somebody. That's their job. That's what they came to do. Um, it was never my intention to have my husband arrested at all. Then you should not have if that wasn't your intention because that's what was going to happen yeah yeah Ted Lee had the scratch on his leg and stuff and his husband was was didn't have anything um as the police took Greg out the door I was sick to my stomach and regretted everything that transpired that night between us regarding the argument I called Greg's best friend Alan and explained to him what happened I truly did not know what to do at this point Alan was supportive and advised me to wait till Greg becomes booked into the city jail system I was told I would eventually have to bail Greg out of jail. I have never experienced none of this before. Hell, I didn't even know the process of how to get someone out of jail and the costs associated with bail. Why do I feel like... Because uh, uh, <laughs> I know how to get somebody out of jail. I got, I got several cards in my purse. For bail bondsmen in different states, and I got holes in different area codes. Listen, around four a.m., I got a collect call from the city jail. It was Greg. Once I egg, once I answered, Greg passionately apologized for everything that happened and begged me to get him out of jail. I could hear the fear in his voice of being in jail overnight. I started crying. Well, it's four a.m. It's already overnight. What do you mean? What do you mean? And you gotta wait. To, you gotta wait till he sees the magistrate and to get a bond first before you can even get him out. So that's not even how. Okay, let me shut up. I re, I started crying as I was speaking to Miss Greg. I reassured him that I was coming to get him out of jail. In fact, earlier that night, I had already located the bail bonds office and paid them to work on releasing him. I was just waiting for their approval from the city jail to release him. Throughout the midst of Greg's mom passing, I still sympathize and continue to make excuses for his behavior. Probably about two hours after speaking with Greg from jail, he was released and freed. I was so unsure of where we both of us stood regarding our marriage. As time went on, initially all I ever wanted between Greg and I was everlasting glowing love and desires to be happy. Exclamation point. End of paragraph. End of chapter. Uh, chapter 8. Love hurts. Ciao. In quotation, there's a quotation at the beginning of the chapter. Love is an untamed force. When we try to control it, it destroys us. When we try to imprison it, it enslaves us. When we try to understand it, it leaves us feeling lost and confused. End of quotation. Things were becoming a concern between Greg and me. We were having so many disagreements about the littlest things. 
The two of us began to sleep in two different rooms. I recommended for us to see a marriage counselor for guidance, but Greg was never open to the idea. See, here it falls, and here's the problem. He needs to be speaking to a grief counselor. He needs a, like a regular, uh, he, he needs a couple doctors. He needs a grief counselor to deal with the passing of his mama, with her, her health and things. He needs a regular therapist to be dealing with the depression that he was diagnosed with. Those two need to be working in coordination with the marriage counselor that he's seeing with Ted. So he kind of needs to be seeing three different people. All in, You know what? Okay. We were having so many disagreements about the littlest things. The two of us began to sleep in two different rooms. Uh, I recommended for us to go see a marriage counselor for guidance, but Greg was never open to the idea. It was the weekend before Valentine's Day, and Greg disappeared from the house for two days. Is he on crack? Because that feels real cracky to me. You gone for two days, nigga? You just went on a crack bench for two days? It was right before Valentine's Day? <laughs> You can't come back to my house after two days because you no longer live here. So no call, no show. Yeah, that's not how that. Okay. Um, I was unaware of his whereabouts. I called him and received no answer through the two days that he was gone. Oh my god. On Valentine's Day, Greg showed up at home. What home? You no longer live here. What do you do? What? What? I believe so, soulful dog. Yes. This is the same ex-husband. That I think was George's friend that they that they fell out about this whole situation. This is this is the situation that led up to them falling out as friends. Uh, he showed up at home. Once he walked in, I asked him where the hell he's been for two days. He told me he went to Houston to visit his friend and classmate from college to clear his head. I explained to him how concerned I was and how disrespected I felt by him just leaving without knowing where he was. To be honest, I felt trouble in paradise and I wasn't believing him at that point. Girl, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> now it's trouble in paradise. Okay, not when you got him arrested for scratching it. That wasn't trouble in paradise. Okay. Listen, everybody lying in the sand, sand, sand. Everybody's lying in the sand is different. Child. Okay, I wasn't believing him at that point. Possibly, possibly infidelity could have been going on. I was just unsure. I began to assume and think the worst. Time and days went on. Nothing was changing between us for the better. I was sacrificing most of my social life and not going places or hanging out with friends as I normally would. I was trying to spend more time at home to be emotionally available for Greg. Greg needs to go sit on somebody's sofa for real. Um, one morning as I was working from home, sitting in the living room on my laptop, Greg had just woken up and came out of the guest room, bedroom. Greg sat down on the couch and next to me and suggested that we needed to talk. I agree with him that we need to talk about us. Greg started off the conversation by saying he thought it would be a good idea for us to live in separate places. At that point, something definitely wasn't adding up in my personal opinion. Despite the fact that we weren't really intimate or having sex with each other, we had two bedrooms and had been sleeping apart. Being married and living apart in two different households just didn't make sense to me. Or it wasn't a logical decision. I initially told Greg I was definitely against the idea of living apart. I always believed in standing by our vows and remaining committed, but I refused to be unhappy. Right, because if you're going to leave, you can just you can just sign the papers and we just go our separate ways and let's be done with it. Uh, I standing by our vows and remain committed, but I also refused to be unhappy, disrespected, and misled. Greg had inherited a lump sum of insurance money from his deceased mother. I also noticed a sudden change in his spending habits. He randomly brought a brand new foreign SUV. Hmm. 
It was everything he checked out on the marriage was simply trying to find an easy way out by doing what he wanted as if he was a single individual. Okay. It was evident he uh individual. It seemed as if he was more serious about our relationship slash marriage prior to his mother's passing. Jesus. I expressed to Greg how I felt in my point of view on things pertaining to his suggestion about living away from each other. I was not budging on that, that idea and most certainly was not abruptly moving during the middle of being obligated to at least both of us responsible for an additional five months at the time. Greg apparently had his mind made up about us living apart. In fact, he volunteered to move out and take care of his portion of the rent for the last month living in the apartment. Greg's decision was selfish and inconsiderate and most of all, so abrupt. We were operating on a dual income regarding joint bills and the overall apartment rent. Upon a Greg electing to move out, he showed no effort to salvage the marriage or to even talk with a marriage counselor. I felt betrayed and confused about how quickly a married individual can bail on you and make you choose between an ultimatum. I began to witness a whole different side of Greg I didn't know existed. Well, listen. That's, listen, my mama taught me never put myself in a situation with a man in regarding house, housing and bills and stuff where I can't cover the whole situation by myself if I need to. Because any day a man can wake up and flip over backwards on you and decide that he don't want you, he don't want that house, he don't want them kids, he don't want none of that shit, and he'll get up and leave and leave you high and dry. So make sure that you by yourself can cover every bill in that house without a beat missing, being missed. Don't, don't put yourself so far out there the, the leaning and depending on this man when people are un, un, unreliable. <laughs> it just is what it is. And, I, and my mama taught me that as a young girl, and I've always gone by that. I've never been in a situation where I couldn't pay the entire rent, like water, table, all of that stuff by myself. I was When I was married, when my husband and I were separated, when I had a living boyfriend, all those things. I, pay, I could pay for everything with no help from me. I'm just saying. Um... Uh, See, I felt betrayed and confused about how quickly a marriage can be bail you make you choose between an ultimatum. I began to witness a whole different side of Greg I didn't know existed. About two to three weeks later, Greg had movers come to the apartment to move his couch and a few other minor things. He left his bed, which we had in our room together. I guess he thought he was doing me a favor by leaving the bed in a nightstand. The majority of everything else in the apartment was mine for the most part. I remember the day of his move, he was so arrogant and nonchalant, things just didn't make sense to me. Before he departed the apartment, I asked him what was he going to do about the responsibility of paying the remaining portion of his rent. His name was still on the lease for five additional months. Greg recommended moving... I can't even talk. Greg recommended removing his name off the lease and adding just mine at the time. <laughs> nah, fuck you and this rant. Okay. I was beyond living and frustrated with the way his mind state was operating. Greg became so cold-hearted and inconsiderate. So here's my question. Did... Was that apartment just in Greg's name? Because I could have sworn he said Greg applied for the apartment and got approved and then they moved down there. So if the apartment was only in Greg's name, do you know how fast I would have applied for an apartment that I could a one bedroom apartment that I could afford and moved all my shit out? And this apartment is in your name, beloved. You figure out how the fuck you gonna pay for the rest of this lease. How about the man? I was beyond living and frustrated with the way his mind state was operating. Greg became so cold-hearted and inconsiderate. He didn't realize how his sudden move would affect me financially. Once Greg moved out completely, I switched all the utilities in just my name. Prior to us moving in together at the beginning of our relationship, I sold a lot of the original furniture I had on my own. What married person wakes up one day and decides they want to move out and financially dismiss their joint obligations with their spouse? Oh, baby, it happens all the time. 
It happens all the time. I'm so sorry. I thought you knew, Joe. Ooh, Lord. Um, seems to me it was all premeditated. It became clear that Greg did not have a care for my well-being. I reflected on the times when I made sacrifices, relocating New Orleans to be closer to him, being there for him throughout his mother's battle with cancer, emotional, mentally supported. I was just mind. It was just mind bottling. I think he means mind boggling. That's not the right word. That Greg had no concern of how his actions were affecting me. Greg was up and I was down. What the hell? There were times I struggled tremendously with paying bills. It was so deceiving and heartbreaking to witness Greg living lavishly while I was stressing daily. Many days and nights, my mind wondered how the accumulation of bills would get paid. Greg's selfish ways and behavior were a true sign of immaturity and initial internal hurt. I'm not saying his mother's death was an excuse for his sudden actions, but there was no validation for any of his behavior. My mother became aware of the whole ordeal regarding Greg moving out and the change of his behavior after his mother's passing. Over time, I began to run into many financial hardships. I went from paying rent that was divided by two individuals to paying the whole amount of monthly rent by myself. The way I would have found a fucking roommate to come in here and pay his half of the rent is two bedrooms. Rent that other room out, child. Sublet that other room out. Um, over time, I guess you were paying rent divided by two to the whole amount monthly rent by myself. I was also maintaining my own personal bills and other expenses. There were times my mother would send me money to cover what would have been Greg's portion of the rent each month. Word got out to some of my friends that Greg had moved out. Some of our mutual friends were becoming concerned as Greg was posting and flaunting certain things on social media social media, such as him taking trips, shopping at designer stores, and partying more than I witnessed him doing. I began to get fed up. It was not fair that I was financially struggling while he was out living his best life. I became stressed with balancing work and the unexplainable things that were going on within my marriage. I was having abdominal stomach pain for a couple of days. I felt in my spirit something wasn't right. I decided to go see my doctor regarding the stomach pain after running tests and conducting a scan of my stomach. It was determined I had ulcers forming in my abdominal area. Yeah, that makes sense. The stress will do that for you. The doctor advised me that the ulcers were forming due to stress and lack of sleep and rest. I knew at that point I had to end the stress and the cause of it. Ultimately, the main reason for my stress was the diminishment of my marriage and the financial burden I was experiencing. After Greg's move, we barely communicated and he had already seemed to move on with his life. I was hearing rumors that he was dating. He was on dating apps. And sexually involved with other guys. If there's one thing I don't play about, it's my damn happiness. And it was time for me to get some shit in order. Exclamation point. End of chapter. That was a rough one. Chapter 9. Flourishing. March of 2022, I decided to begin the process of filing for divorce. In Texas, you must be legally separated for 60 days before the legal process of divorce can begin. During the separation phase, I reached out to Greg and told him I'm in the process of filing for divorce. And as, and I soon let him know once the papers were ready to be signed. Greg became ambivalent and passive aggressive. It even became embarrassing as he began creating a narrative regarding the reasoning for our separation. Although everything was flourishing with my career and I was traveling heavily with my job, I still had the burden of the divorce on my shoulders. It was very grateful for my true I was very grateful for my true friends. Being by my side throughout the difficult time, I was coming to the realization that I married someone who was not ready for a true commitment. I was beginning to blame myself for moving too fast with the wrong individual. I began to pull myself away from the being out on the social scene and spent more time mentally healing and focusing on work. My mom came into town often to visit me and I truly enjoyed those times. Approximately 60 days passed, my divorce documents were finally issued to me and were ready to be signed. My attorney informed me that I would need to come to an agreement with Greg and get him to sign off on the documents as soon as possible, but we had a small window of time to get the documents signed. I later learned that Greg was out of the country and on vacation. I was unable to contact him. My documents then expired, and after a bit, and a bit after texting Greg for weeks, he called to let me know he had also filed for force and consulted with an attorney. 
that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean the documents expire? How do the documents expire? Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I was exhausted and truly disgusted by his childish ways. Greg asked if we could go meet if we could meet to sign off on his documents. I surely told him yes. At that point, I didn't care who filed first or who documents would be valid with the judge. I just wanted to be done. The both of us did come to a mutual agreement to file for a non-consent divorce, meaning a more peaceful and efficient process to end the a mutual process into the marriage. I met up with Greg in a public parking lot in the mall to sign the papers. It literally took less than 10 minutes. You could literally feel the tension between us as we both got out of our cars to meet face to face and sign the document. After signing his documents, the divorce was one step closer to being completed. Afterwards, I felt a bit of relief and had hopes the process of divorce would be finalized as soon as possible. The summer was approaching and I had planned a birthday trip for my mom to New York. I was not letting the situation of my divorce ruin her trip by any means. The lease at the apartment Greg and I was living at was coming to an end within a month or two. I had already planned on moving to a new place after the lease was up. The only thing I have to do in the near month was pack up and hire movers. I knew change was coming, but was unsure how things would work out in my favor. My mom and I had an amazing time for her birthday in New York. Ever since I was a kid, I enjoyed quality time with her, no matter what we were doing. My mom always was always the first person I had called to share my personal moments with, whether it was good, bad, or good. On our flight back to Texas from New York, things began to weigh heavily on my mind. My mom could tell I was worried about the uncertainties. I remember she looked at me and tapped me on the knee and said, divorce is okay. Starting over is okay. Moving on is okay. What is not okay is staying somewhere you're not valued and appreciated. You better say that, mama. You better say that. As I transitioned into my new place, after a month later, I was beginning to feel like I was living a new life. In a new space. The only thing I was waiting for was the divorce to be final. I purged a lot of material things that reminded me of Greg. On October 4th, 2022, I was legally divorced. I received a phone call from the attorney office letting me know the divorce was granted and final. I was told I was able to obtain a copy of the finalized divorce decree from the office as well. I shared the news with my mom, some of my close friends at the time. I was feeling like a brand new person. Despite the fact that I was still recovering financially from the setback of paying more bills than usual, my peace was regained and became a priority again. Moving forward, I made a golden promise to myself that I would never allow anyone to enter my life and steal my joy. Well, how does that explain these other niggas then? That you've allowed to come in and show your act? Okay. Chapter 10. End of, end of, end of the... Paragraph, end of the chapter. Chapter 10. Manifestation. Oh, here we go. Let's get my action. It's my time to shine. At this point in my life, it's all about me. I no longer have the desire to pour into anyone but myself. I have begun to realize throughout my past, I was spending way too much time chasing what I thought was love. Like Congressman, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, I'm reclaiming my time. I know that's right. Writing this book helped me through times when I was very full of uncertainty about life and felt like I had no one to express myself to. I don't regret any heartbreak or shortcomings I've experienced in the past simply because it was made me who I am today. I'm enjoying life to the fullest while still learning from my mistakes and adversities. I am proud of all of that. I have accomplished. I Writing this book was not easy. Writing this book I'm sorry. Writing this book was not easy. There were times I wanted to give up on completing this autobiography about my life. There are many things I still aspire to and become, but with God, anything is possible. All right. I am resilient and full of inspiration. I know life will always be full of triumphs and downfalls, no matter what you have to remain true to yourself and keep on pushing. God really is a miracle worker. I'm so grateful. I don't look like what I've been to. Let them browse. I'm going to share that. Okay. Throughout each chapter of this book, a valuable lesson was learned from every single situation. You can't control how people treat you or what they've done to you. Karma don't miss a soul. So be careful how you treat people. 
Without a doubt, I've often reflected on certain situations in my past and get in my feelings at times. Some of those situations serve as a reminder of how strong I am and to never fold and give up. As I wake up every day, I challenge myself to become a better person than I was the previous day. At age 33, he's only 33? Huh. Okay. At 33, today I am a successful real estate professional, mentor, entrepreneur, author, and cast member of the LGBT reality show Chasing Dennis. This won't be the last time you'll be reading about me and my story because there will always be more to add to my story as I'm currently living my life like it's golden. Regardless of what I've been through, I've made it and I'm still breathing with life in my body. My purpose for writing this book was to tell the truth throughout different phases of my life, the good and bad. Whether you are a supporter, hater, or neither, I thank you for reading about some of the most golden moments of my life. I did it, still doing it, and mastered it. Oh, and that's the end. Oh, and there's tributes to his mama, and I think his daddy, his granny, somebody named Roderick. I'm not. <laughs> that was the end of the book, Perseverance. Um, I did it, I'm still doing it, and I'm going to master it. By one Ted Lee Phillips III. This uh, was a two-hour read. It, you know, there was there were some grammaticals. This could have been a proofread a little bit better. Uh, not yet? Question mark. <laughs> I am an avid reader. Reader. Um. Like. We made it. We made it through. Uh, listen. Wow, a lot. I deserve the cookie. That was a lot. <laughs> now we get it, yo. <laughs> That was a lot. Okay. I didn't think he was that young. I thought he was almost 40. Thank you, Tracy. Not <laughs> Tracy Cash. I've been talking about. I could never read that. <laughs> Listen. A mess. Y'all a mess. That was um. There were some very heartfelt parts of this book. Not now, master spell check. Let Let's give credit where credit is due. Titan passing away, his friend unfortunately losing his life behind the date nap, his granny passing, the mother-in-law passing. There was some very heavy moments to this book. Uh, and it takes a lot to share that type of stuff. I think it's the fibers or whatever that comes Mm-hmm. Right, crazy. If he had had an editor to, to, to proofread it and make it more streamlined, to make it make more sense. Okay, that I gotta go, because I ain't even watched the show yet. Listen, tell your friends if they don't want to read the book to come back and watch this video where I read it to y'all. I gotta go watch RuPaul's Drag Race so I can be ready for the panel at six o'clock. <laughs> I 
I think the dog story is true. I think the um it could all be true, honestly. That part about Slime being at the wall with me, though. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. I hope y'all did too. I'll see y'all at 6 30. I'll be at El Teddy's house for the for the drag race. Why are you mad at Astro and Kesey? Mm-mm. I was Astro at the book launching. Let me read a page. I'm going to pay the book. Kishi didn't buy the book. He said he didn't buy that book. He had intentions on buying the book, but he didn't buy the book. So Kishi don't even know what's in the book. There were good moments in the book. He just, it just needed to be crafted a bit. Because it moves, some like, comes up, it was like whiplash. Cause he jumped from something real heavy, and then we moved to something else. No problem. I had a lovely time. I hope y'all enjoyed all of my dramatics. I, I gotta go. I gotta go watch this episode. I love y'all. I see y'all later. I see y'all at El Teddy's, and then I may be back later because I went way over time. And y'all know my friend who sings my theme song. Who has the notes for Ch for the chasing shows? He and I are gonna review episode one live. So I had to call him because he was we were gonna do it on his lunch break at work, and I went past my time, so I had to call him and see what. He could have paid those experiences the respect they deserve by taking the time to craft the narrative properly. Right, and that book could have been. Almost two, maybe two, three times as long if you had done it correctly and told a full and didn't jump. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, I gotta get out of here. Okay. I love y'all. Thank y'all for hanging out with me for this entire two and a half hours to listen to me read this book. Like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a kin. Um, and I will catch y'all later at El Teddy's house for the Whoopals. He said... <laughs>